there is angelic activities right here there is a downpour and an investment from a heaven and I believe today might be somebody's historical service today might be somebody's unusual moment somebody might have today as his own reference point as I was in that service I prayed and God answered and the Lord gave to me wisdom from above I wanted to lift up your two hands above your head and just thank God for the beautiful atmosphere that we have right here. I'm not referring to the lightning. I'm not referring to the sound production. I'm not referring to the multimedia electronics. I'm referring to the presence of God that we have been able to bet, cultivate, not just sustain from the plagues of prayer and hunger. There is a community of people right here, a generation of people whose pleasure is in the presence of the Lord. Come on, 30 seconds. You've got to grow up in your spiritual walk and understand that is the greatest asset. The presence of God. The presence of God. Let's raise our voices in thanksgiving. The the race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the mind. But time and chance happen to them all. Somebody is coming to his own time. Somebody is having his own chance. Inhale his presence in this place. Embrace his presence. Inhale his presence. Embrace his presence. In all his presence, in all his presence, somebody in all his presence. I see healing in your body, I see effectiveness in your undertaking. I see wisdom, I see grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Can we just spend 30 seconds, if you don't mind, to pray in the things that the Lord wants to speak to us today? God wants to talk to us about wisdom. I want to just pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, I need your wisdom. I know what I'm talking about. Wisdom. Jesus is the embodiment of the wisdom and the power of God. I wanted to cry in 30 seconds. Genuinely, sincerely, honestly, that the era of foolishness is over. That era of folly is gone. That era of costly mistakes and decisions are over. Is there anybody that have 20 seconds left? Is anybody here with these 20 seconds left to cry as a God? The era of foolishness is over. It's time for wisdom. Concerning your business, concerning your career, concerning your work, concerning your relationship, concerning your marriage, concerning your finance, concerning ministry, concerning your health, wisdom, wisdom. 10 seconds left. Wisdom. 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 In Jesus, mighty name, we are prayed. I wanted to give the Lord a resounding clap offering wherever you are standing. Wherever you are standing. Ah, wherever you are standing. to know that God is up to something great if you have not joined us in fasting and praying today is day 14 right day 14 there is no big deal about this thing don't allow the devil to manipulate your understanding I beg you don't allow the devil to shoot you don't allow the devil to cage you with mental retardation 
and distorted, corrupted thinking pattern. That there is no need for you to fast. Don't let the biting of your tummy to deprive you of this season of waiting upon the Lord. I believe God that by the time we are done, somebody will have a radical change. So we are ongoing. The prayer points are flooded everywhere on all social media platforms, WhatsApp group, and prayer hours. 7 a.m. in the morning, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and 7 p.m. at night. Wednesday early morning on all social media platforms, and all these prayer hours on Missellar and WhatsApp, I wanted to take advantage of them. You can't afford to live your life ordinary. You are a spiritual being. Please stay with me. You can't afford to live your life as an ordinary entity. Don't allow your studies in school, your exposure, social media, and all sorts of stuff happening around the world to make you to descend so low and see yourself ordinary. You are a spirit. You have a different life. Your food as a spirit is not bread and beans. It's not rice and chicken. It's a life. It's the meal of the word of God and the life extracted from God's word. It's worship. It's prayer. It's communion. It's fellowshipping. That is how you feed your spirit and make it strong. So opportunity is here for you and I at least for three months to have a concentrated and consecrated discipline of self and consciously subject yourself so that the word of God can sit and worship can res resides and you can tell from within yourself that something is already being shaded off. Very key, very important. Open up your ears to pick instructions in this season. There are things God will be saying to you that will be so personal. Uncelebrated decisions will be required from you as God is giving you popular instructions. When will you continue to play with your life? It's time to separate the boys from men. It's time for every child in the building to grow up and, be, and come to adulthood. And this will happen by certain instructions, certain burdens, certain dealings. And the Lord will begin to bring you to the place of prayer. You will tap in the midnight season and say, Son, daughter, pray. He will pull you aside in the midst of the crowd. You'll be driving and you'll have certain burden and presence in your vehicle and you'll pull by, by the mall, by the supermarket, by the road. Because if you continue, you are not sure that there will be no accidents. And you just pull over for five seconds, for five minutes. So you can take advantage and pen down and consolidate and maximize whatever God is having you do or saying to you saying to you, I say this because I don't want anyone to play games with fasting and praying. Do it. Eloquence is not sufficient. Beauty is not sufficient. Handsome looking is not sufficient. Power is key. And power is generated in the place of prayer, fasting, and intake of the word. You will not lose this moment. In Jesus' name. Turn your Bible to Job 32 verse 8 while we remain standing. We stand for kings and presidents. How much more? The everlasting word of God. But there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives him what? I want you to read that verse of the Bible again. You can read two more times and see yourself in the light of the scripture. Either you're a lady here or you're a man, you are the man God is talking about here. Forget about your human, your human gender and just see yourself in the light of God's word. Male and female, you made them. So, he's talking about you. Read it, but see yourself in the light of this verse. But there is a spirit in man. You are that man. There's a spirit in you. And that spirit that is in you is the breath of the Almighty. And under fashion says the inspiration that is the spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty. Gives him what? Understanding. So finally, shall we read? But there is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty 
gives him understanding. Father, bless the preaching and the teaching of your word. Bring us to a place of understanding. And we receive grace to apply the understanding. And we walk in wisdom. In Jesus' name. Please get seated. Don't forget to load your gadgets and tricks. Because I've been hearing all of them. This is Sunday morning and that is a text message at the wake of the day. That I saw on my phone. Which means you never can tell who is listening. You never can tell who the Lord is blessing. And that could be because you made up your mind to be an agent of spread. Of the word of truth. Particularly in this age that there are all kinds of dilutions and confusion. And all kinds of satanic advancement against the body of Christ. And the voices of the God's oracles. To shut them down and to deprive people from hearing what they should hear. So keep sharing. Keep spreading. Keep using your data to advance the gospel. And the Lord will enrich you in return and bless you in no little way in Jesus' name. We speak about the spirit of wisdom and we have prayed effectively this morning. I need you to understand, child of God, that prayer's ultimate is asking for wisdom. Prayer's ultimate is asking for wisdom. Prayer's ultimate is asking Asking for wisdom. I will repeat one more time. Prayers ultimate is asking for wisdom. Often than none, every time people come to pray, they are praying for husband, they are praying for wife, they are praying for vehicles, they are praying for business breakthroughs. They are praying for all of those things which are important. Very good. But understanding, make it so clear to you and I that the prayers ultimate is a request for wisdom. Why? Wisdom is a producer of all other things. You can't have wisdom and not have many things. Wisdom will give you husband. Wisdom will give you a wife. Wisdom will give you cars. Wisdom will give you houses and build houses for you. Wisdom will give you favor. Wisdom will give you security. Wisdom will give you sustainability. Oh, I'm preaching already. It's on me. Wisdom will navigate your destiny. Wisdom will make you approved. Wisdom will make you a person of honor. Wisdom will help you to function in discretion. Wisdom will make you to sit properly. Will make you to stand properly. Wisdom will give you a pleasant speech. You talk and your talks are acceptable. Wisdom will make men to stand up for you when you arrive. Wisdom will make them to pick up their phone and dial your number and call you. Wisdom will make them to request for your email and send you an email because you've got to be in the sitting you got to be in the environment. Wisdom will make kings to be your friends and your associates. I mean kings. I mean kings. Wisdom will give you a throne and ensure that you sit upon your throne. Wisdom is what you need. So when we come to pray, we must spend time to pray ultimately for wisdom. The Bible speaks to us in first kings. Let me begin from there and travel. Guys, pray, preach with me. 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning from verse 1 to 15, speaks about the activities between Solomon and God. The Bible said, now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married the Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David, and they had finished building his own house, and the house of the law, and the world all around, verse 2. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the law, walking in the status of his father David, except that he sacrificed and bound in saints at the high places. What the dimensions of love and sacrifices. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. What a crazy man. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared for these humongous sacrifices and this amazing thing you have done. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and God said, Mr. Solomon, King Solomon, ask, what shall I give you? Verse 7, please. What shall I give you? And Sol- for six, okay. And Solomon said, 
You have shown, go back to verse 6, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on his throne at his, this day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Pay attention. Wisdom and pride does not coexist. There is a voice of humility. There is a voice of meekness. Underneath these transactions and voice communication between Solomon and God. He said, Lord, I don't even know how to go to the right and go to the left. A old king, an adult, in his adolescent, in his privileged status, upon his throne, he's a commander. He has a domain because he's a king. And he was talking to us. I said, God, I'm a little child. I don't even know how to go right or go to the left. I thought, I, I thought I understand. He said, I don't even know. And because I don't know how to go about this thing, God, I am asking. What did he ask for? He said, and your servant is in the midst of your people and whom you have chosen. He didn't take them for granted. He said, this is awesome. These are your people, your precious value. Whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered. Or counted. These guys are too much. They are your guys. They are too numerous. Verse 9. He said, Lord, what I'm asking. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? Every time your heart is lifted, you disconnect from wisdom. Every time. Your heart is lifted. You disconnect from wisdom. But every time your heart is lowly and you are humble from within, there is tendency, there is possibility of a huge cry to reach out to wisdom. We are still reading. Look at the pronoun, I mean, look at the conversation and the way it was going. Look at verse 10. Ah, this blessed me. This speech pleased the law. That Solomon had asked this thing. The Bible is very clear. When you are reading your Bible, please put in your thinking cap. This, T-I-T-H-I-S, singular. Thing, T-H-I-N-G, singular. The speech pleads the law that Solomon had asked this thing, not things. There is a thing to ask that produces things. There is what? A thing to ask that produces what? Things. But many are asking for things to get things. That speech pleads the law. What is the speech? That speech of wisdom request. From the art of humility and value. Oh my God. Don't lose this one. In other words, in his art was humility. In his perception was value for humanity. In his art was humility. In his perception was value for people. You can, the husband you don't value, you can't demand for wisdom to relate with him. The wife you don't value, you cannot request from wisdom from heaven to relate with her. The job and the client you disrespect, you cannot ask for wisdom to relate with them very well. Solomon had a perception about God's people. They are your people. They are too numerous. How will I get this thing done? There was no ego. There was no pride. I love the way God began with us this morning and the way he's entering our system about this message. The major disqualification from wisdom is pride. Ego. Overestimation of selves. Abuse of privileges. Abuse of giftings and talents. I know you are gifted. I know you are blessed. I know you have been endowed by heaven. I know you have money. I know your bank account is very robust. I know you are beautiful. You are good looking. You are handsome. But listen carefully, that is not a validation that for the oppression of God's wisdom. You must be able to excuse yourself of your privileges and excuse yourself of all the traits and all the talents and the giftings of God upon your life and be in a position of humility so you can connect with the wisdom that is required. He had humility in his heart and he had perception of value for things and people around him and his privileges, and he was able to request from heaven for wisdom. And the Bible says, let it. That speech pleads the Lord, get back, son. And that speech 
pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Verse 11, 12. Then, verse 11, then God said to him, because you have asked this thing, God was not making a mistake in his response. God was not making a mistake in his response. When I'm through this morning, I'm going to beg of you to ask for only one thing. In fact, for the next 24 hours, you pick up the other prayer point from tomorrow, but for the next 24 hours, let the only thing you are asking God for is this thing. You see, there was a, cons a, a consistency in this repetition of, of referral. God was referring to his speech and God was emphasizing on just this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, you have not asked for riches for yourself, you have not asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself, understand, good discern justice. Isn't that what we ask for? We are asking for long life, we are asking for riches, we are asking for victory over our enemies. Is, are this not the thing that we do ask for? Your enemy must fall down and die. Money must come, riches and wealth. Long life and prosperity. These are the natural things that we do ask for. There is nothing wrong in making requests for those things. But every time God is addressing you and I, you know what God is doing? God is trying to bring us to an higher life. God always wants you and I to live beyond the mundane and live beyond the terrestrial and live beyond the surface. I don't know who is under the sound of my voice, but I see somebody traveling deeper with God this season. I love your militant response. It gladdens my heart. Every time God is confronting us and God is bringing us into a place of conversations, all that God wants to do eventually and conclusively is to upgrade you and I. Upgrade us to his place, to his stature. You can't be chasing after vehicles and chasing after cars and chasing after the natural things and you will have access to the superior things. He said, you have not asked for long life. Media, preach with me again. You are traveling very long this morning. May God grant us speed. He said, you have not asked for yourself long life for riches, for yourself, for your husband, for this, for that, for your enemies. But I've asked for yourself understand to discern justice. To discern justice. To be feared. To be okay, to be insightful. Verse 12, my dear. We have asked for understanding to design just the behold in response to your good heart, in response to your sense of priority. I have done according to your words. There is somebody hearing me today. Your request for wisdom shall be granted. Amen. See also, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. So that there has not be anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you rise after you. Who is ready for a journey of distinction? When wisdom descends, please, please, when wisdom descends, things begin to happen beyond your own qualifications. And things begin to happen beyond your own taste and your own passion. At this time, it's not because you want a promotion, God ensure you are promoted. It's not because you wanted to be better than people. God ensures that you are preferred and in truth and indeed you are better than people. I don't know who is hearing my voice today with the sound of wisdom, with the penetration of wisdom, with the dwelling of wisdom. You will be lifted above others. Yeah. I, I see an energy in the building. There's an anointing in this building this morning. That in truth and in deep sounds and daughters in the building that people are discussing about you. There is nobody like that guy. That was not your prayer request but wisdom provided it for you. This was not your prayer request. That was what you were praying about. You are not the one praying it. You are not saying, God, may I be the best person in town. You don't have to pray that kind of a prayer. That is a reward from heaven. That is a reward from heaven. It's a reward from God. He said, I will ensure that nobody is like you or will be after you for starting there. Not only in distinction. Look at the next statement. And I have also given you what you have not asked. I love this. What a good place to start. You have asked for this thing. I will give you a distinction. When they are looking for who to counsel, who to bring advice, they will not hear any other person until you arrive. Amen. You know why? They say to themselves, there is nobody that can give us the right counsel like you. That was not your prayer point. That was what God gives to you. And apart from that, because the things you didn't ask for, let's look at those things you didn't ask for. He said the things you never asked for, 
That was not your priority. So we are setting our priority right this morning. He said, and I have also given you what you have not asked. What are those things? Both riches and honor. There are two different things, bro. You can be rich and lack honor. You can be honorable and lack riches. Honorable without riches is who? Jabez. We prayed about that story this morning. He was more honorable than his brothers, but he was incarcerated. He was limited. He was confined. He was inexpressive. He was not obviously in the place of manifestations. And he had to go to God and cry for breakthrough and cry for territorial enlargement. And God acting unto his voice. A man can have riches, but nobody is interested in his life. God says, I will not only give you riches, I will accomplish with honor. That was not what you are asking for. You ask for what pleases me. It occurs to the people of God. Every time wisdom is demanded for, God is excited. And you got to be a smart guy. Be a smart believer who understands what God loves. He said, listen carefully. I will give what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, son. Let's go. For what you have not asked for, both riches and honor. So that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. I'm interested. As many of us here, I see God coming true to his word. I see God keeping true to his word. He said, all the days of your life, the kind of riches and honor I will give to you, that shall be none like it. I don't know who is under the sound of my voice. With the reign of wisdom in your life, in your lineage, nobody shall be as great like you. You don't say amen. It's your choice. I'm, pay, I'm, I'm, I'm lifting the pages of the scripture into the, your destiny space. It is your choice to embrace it. It is your choice to reject it. But every receiver in the building today, I demand from heaven that with the rain of wisdom in your life, that shall be none in your language like you. That was what God says from his word. All the days of your life, my friend, your honor and riches. I will give you honor and riches, and none shall be able to be like you. There, verse 14, please. So, if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And the more I lengthen your days, the more you don't know, you don't know dive. You don't know dive, you don't diminish. I lengthen your days and I progress in wisdom. And the riches and in honor. Next. In riches and in honor. Then Solomon awoke. What an encounter. Indeed, it had been what? A dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And offered burnt offerings. Offered peace offerings. And made a feast for all his servants. Can you imagine? Somebody began with prayer and sacrifices. And the heaven opened. And the only thing he was asking for was wisdom. Please, without being ambiguous, simplified, classified, internal truths, wisdom should be your number one choice in life. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all that getting, get understanding. You must come to a strong light, strong illumination, that in all your craving, you are craving for understanding. And that was how he says, if there's anything I ever need in my life, it's wisdom. And Solomon is a case study. So our verse that we read, to open up the message says, there is a spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So the essence of your spirit is for understanding. The reason you are alive, looking at me this morning, I sit at the end of the of God, and the spirit is at work within you, is to essentially put you in a place of understanding. Understanding is light. The essence of the Holy Spirit is to give you understanding, bringing you to the place of wisdom. So you have understanding, functional at you in your life. Functional in your life, understanding. And this understanding is set to see wisdom. You understand what it is? set to see wisdom. Set wisdom. The wisdom, this wisdom, many times we justify faith. And it can be called the foolishness of faith because every time you flow in understanding, it means that you are coming, in, you are in a place of comprehension. And because it's God's giving, spirit giving, it functions like faith. It operates like faith. Faith in what sense? Faith 
is believing in what is yet seen. What is yet to happen. So in other words, the wisdom that we are referring to is what drags you away and snatches you away from common embrace. Common what? Embrace. Common embrace could be what I call human security. Human security. And most of all, the reason we have not ascended, the reason we have not changed levels, we have not broken through, we have not penetrated is because we are, still, we are still swimming in the common trends. We are swimming in common security. We are doing the most convenient, are doing the, the most humanly appropriate. But the wisdom of God several times, we take away from that comfort zone and that stuff and begin to make it to operate in what sometimes that can be called foolishness. But it is not really foolish, but they thought it's foolish because there's an understanding in you that is communicating that to you. The spirit in a man, the inspiration of the Almighty, the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So the spirit of God in you is so empowered that it inspires you by the breath of God and you come to certain awareness, certain knowing. And it's well understood and cleared. And as you get stuck to those things, to apply them, it's called wisdom. And many times, because it's God giving, it operates like faith. The Bible speaks to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, 25. It's about those who are called, both Jews and Greeks. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Christ is the what? The power and the wisdom of God. He's the power and the wisdom of God. So Christ in you is two things working together. Power and wisdom. So the Holy Ghost inside of you is light, is light, is understanding, is inspirations. So in other words, everybody can be packed in a room and they're all taken in one direction. And because you have understanding by divine inspiration, by the breath of God, something just flashed to your concept, to understanding. There's a awareness that just comes like a beam of light, illuminating you from within. That's what called understanding. Understanding suggests clarity of knowing. Understanding is stronger than information. I'm sure you know. Many people are informed, but they lack understanding for the information. Many are quoting what they don't understand. Many are reading what they don't understand. Many are hearing what they don't understand. When understanding comes, you can talk it, you can teach it, you can do it, you can repeat it. And because we are talking about that with spiritual here, that which is given from above. That was why Solomon asked for it. We'll get there. It will always take you from the natural frequency and the natural waves. Somebody said to operate superlatively after this morning service. He said, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. And when this wisdom is at work in your life, the Bible says that it appears so foolish. But listen carefully, it's stronger than the wisdom of men. It's wiser rather than the, than, than the wisdom of men. And it's stronger. The weakness of God is stronger than men. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. Listen, Kev, when you live here today, and I'm expecting testimony, God will tell you some things this week that will negate logics. It will appear a bit foolish, but remember that you attended a service that wisdom was discussed. Wisdom is not what you pick that is generally everywhere. That is not it. If wisdom is not scarce, it's not valuable. It's not common. Wisdom is uncommon. That's why that's uncommon rewards and uncommon attachment. The Bible talks about this kind of foolishness called wisdom. In chapter 2 of John, verse 1 to 11, you know the story. Jesus said to her mom, woman, what does your cause have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. The miracle of the wine, of the water turned to wine. His mother said to the servant, whatever he seeks to you, do it. Now there was, there, there, now I'm reading from John 2, 1 to 11. Now there was said there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pot with water. And they filled them up to the brim and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servant who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom's attention. And he said to him, every man at the beginning said, add good wine. When the guests have well drunk, then they in failure. You have kept the good wine until now? And this happened to be the beginning of Jesus' beginning 
of signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifested his glory, and the disciples believed in him. Now, the end product of which there will always be better and glorious. But the foolishness there, which I want to, I'm putting your put attention to quickly, the foolishness there is that it's quite uncommon, unreasonable. How can we, be, how can we run out of water? And on that demand and pressure by the, his biological mom, that Jesus said to them, what God to go and get water pots and start filling them with water. You see, before Jesus could say that, what happened to him was Job 32 verse 8. There's, there's a spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty, or what? The inspiration of the Almighty. That gives you what? Understanding. It's like, it's like you are in a situation that spirit in you just inspire you on what to do. Oh, am I in the building? So, the testimony of John 2, 1 to 11 was the reality of Job what? 32 verse 8. Please mention scriptures with me. You must know this thing. The testimony of what? John 2 verse what? 1 to 11 is the reality of what? Job 32 verse what? Verse 8. Thank you. Verse 8. So, you are in a situation like this. You ask yourself, how do I get money? How do I do this? Oh, no, 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 no. And that is spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty that gives you what? Understanding. You just know what to do. You just get inspired. At, at that moment, you know what to do. That was what happened to Christ. I said, what should happen now? Mommy, by the time I start yet to come, I'm not yet ready. I'm planning myself. I'm putting my myself together. I said, don't mind Jesus. What is, whatever I tell you to do, do it. He knew at that point that his mother has bust him into a corner. And he must bail himself out. And right at that point, Job 32 verse 8 came alive. He said, okay, go and get water pots. Feed them with water. And go and be serving. That is foolishness. This week, you will operate in a higher dimension. Amen. <laughs> it's foolishness. So that understanding was not read in any book. It was not picked anywhere. Spirit connected. Holy Ghost inspired. And as they did, it was so superb that the chief of the master ceremony, the Bible says that when he drank it and tasted it, he was like, what's going on here? How dare you guys reserve the best or the last? But that's anyway what happens. Every time God is operating wisdom through you, he makes you always have the best reserved for the last. I rest in the building. And you see, it also brings about the glory of God upon your life. Wisdom is stronger than weapons. Somebody is about to win his battle here by wisdom. Somebody is about to take over people by wisdom. So wisdom is doing it more excellently. Wisdom is being able to capture what God wanted to do in clarity and getting them done. You have an incredible result. The Bible speaks to us in Hebrews 11 verse 4. He said, by faith, a bed offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift. Through, though, through it, he being dead, still speaks. In other words, every time this kind of testimony is happening in your life, hear me well, without any ambiguity, without any complexity of speech and languages and words. Every time God's wisdom is at work in your life, you do things better. That foolishness must end things to become what? Better. At the initial stage, they may not be able to understand it because you are operating by a higher level of wisdom. But at the end of the day, it does not decrease you. If whatever you call wisdom brings you to minus, it's not wisdom. Are you seeing the building? If the way you are living with your husband always brings more trouble, you are not working in wisdom. If the way you are living with your wife only brings more crisis, man, you are not working in wisdom. Wisdom is not managing situation. It's making things better. The wine was better. Abed offering was what? Better. So who told Abed to give exactly what he gave? You are taking home this morning. Job 32 verse 8. That's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the almighty. That gives you what? Understanding. You get to a place. And say, Everybody has been talking. But when you talk, that's the way you talk that is different. What ebbed you out? That is spirit in man. The inspiration of the almighty. That do what? That does what? Gives him understanding. So the wisdom of God is powerful. Wisdom is coming to understanding 
And the applied understanding is what we can describe as wisdom. So wisdom is the application of God's word as it relates to you. Not just reading and running, reading and understanding. Job 3, 2, verse 8. Not just hearing and running, but hearing and understanding. Not just being informed and running, but being informed and understanding. Glory to God. Glory to God. You will walk in wisdom. Therefore, every child of God, I came here to challenge you. Your report card will be wisdom report card. Amen. And a wisdom report card means you are better. Come on now, say you are better. Amen. If I had the house of the every day, you would be better. Amen. This is my son, Jerry, come here. Last Sunday, he was so excited. You know, we were after the service. Super excited. He said, sir, I want to see you. I, I was wondering, what, what is it? He said, I want to show you my results. He sent his result to me. He has sustained a one. Eh? First class. So don't come at the county base in church and see if it's a gathering of dull people. Because some people they tell, okay, if you don't have what to do in life, just go and go to church and be playing and be playing drums. No. No, look at me. Don't buy your head. You are in the right church here. Yeah? Wisdom is to be better. And you don't struggle. Lord, I must be a better person. No, I've told you. Solomon didn't say that. Solomon was doing a spiritual assignment of praying and offering sacrifice and the heaven opened and God said, what do you want? The reason most of us are not wise is because we are occupied with material things. Just go back to the days where you school. Those why I stay in school. The genius among the students sometimes are those who concentrate with their studies. Very rare to those who are scattered and distracted very brilliant, very real. Some are gifted, but the percentage is extremely low. Extremely low. Extremely low. We cannot be a community of God's people, and our report card is always zero, red at all times. Either in business or in career, no, sir. Wisdom is understanding the world and applying it. Understanding information and applying it. And social understanding is that which comes by the spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty that gives him what? Understanding. It's entirely connected to the spirit of God at work in your life. It is obeying the voice of God. That's wisdom. Obeying the voice of God is clear. It is doing the written word is clear. Wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Clear. Understood. We have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Wisdom is the last step of these three things. And it is the realm of the doing that brings results. So we have knowledge, we have understanding, we have what? Wisdom. Now sometimes some of us will pray, Lord, give me knowledge, give me understanding, give me wisdom. Fantastic. When God gives you knowledge, what the answer to that prayer is this. God grant you grace to study. God grant you grace to search. God grant you grace to find. Knowledge, knowledge is found. Knowledge is sought for. Knowledge is discovered, and that requires responsibility. Can I hear I hear this morning? So after you have done everything by God's enabling you to be exposed, to acquire, to take responsible steps, to get knowledge, then understanding that knowledge is deeper. Knowledge is not as deep as understanding. But what now brings out the color and the greatness is the wisdom. Because it is only what you understood that is applied that gives results. Many are applying things they don't understand. So instead of having results, they're having breakdown. Praise God. A guy who doesn't understand tailoring and fashion business is just so close. And the more he sows, the more he has problems. There is no wisdom. No wisdom. Look at that, my son. When he began, even me, I can't give him my clothes. Because he had a passion. That was what he had in school. Passion came, knowledge was available, but understanding was not sufficient. So there's always problem. But as understanding gets deeper and he's, he's applying the understanding from his knowledge, he started working in wisdom and everybody is now par, par, patronizing. So wisdom is what sustains patronage. Wisdom is what sustains patronage. Can I hear here this morning? Wisdom is not a mental storage of knowledge. It is faith action. Wisdom it's not a mental storage of knowledge. It is faith action. Why is it faith action? Is it doing face? It is application face. Is it doing face? He said, Lord, I am a child. I don't know how to go right or go to left. These are your people, numerous, fantastic people. Grant me wisdom to be able to design what? Justice. 
So I can know what to do. That was the when there was a controversy about those two guys, about those two women that have what? A child each. And the two of them died. And one died, right? So I beg your pardon. One died. And there was a claim. Look, see, there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty that gives him what? Understanding. Where did that understanding come from? Something just appeared to him. Hey. Okay, no problem. We'll kill the second one now. Is that the story? One agreed. One said, no, 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 no. Keep him alive. Give it to whoever you want. And at that point, the king knew who the mother was. Something was available at that point. Those things were not things that were read. They are this the wisdom of Mabu. Answer to his request from heaven. This week they will know you have found wisdom. Amen. It is called faith in action. When you apply your acquired knowledge and understanding, I love this. When you apply your acquired knowledge in understanding, it is called faith wisdom. This is why wisdom is associated with exploits. Every time people see results, they want to comment on the wisdom behind it. When they see testimonies, they want to comment on something behind it. This is it. Let me explain to you. This is it. Revelatory knowledge says you found a scripture on a given matter. For example, your health. Revelatory knowledge. We have celebrated revelatory knowledge too much in the body of Christ. We got to begin to celebrate wisdom. So what is that? Now let's, let's go into it. For example, you found a revelatory knowledge about your health from Isaiah 15 verse 5 that says, you was wounded for our transgressions, you was bruised for our what? Iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon his son. I'm teaching good this morning. And by stripes we are healed. So you just saw this clear as information. And by light, it dawned on your spirit and you are suffering from a challenge. Now let's explore it. That is the information you have found. Understanding then comes and says, if I am healed by his stripes, then I am not sick. Should we work it out? You are shivering. You are suffering from a challenge. And you find repetitory knowledge that by his stripes you are healed. The chastisement of your, of your peace was laid upon him. So understanding has not come until you say by this information, even though I have bodily signs of sickness, I am not sick. Wisdom now says, if I am not sick, then I must stop feeling, talking, and acting sick. You get the gist? That is the revelatory knowledge you have found. By stripes you are healed. Glory to God. Oh, what a joy. You are rejoicing about that. But we don't know you have understanding until we say what someone to say, I'm not sick. That is foolishness, right? Because you want to say, no, you are sick. Look at your eyes. It's very reddish. Look at you. Look at all this body. Your body is no. You say, no, I am not sick. That's understanding. You are saying that because you have understood the scripture very well. That's a spirit in man. That is spirit of the Almighty that gives you what? Understanding. Now let's go further. What is that wisdom? Even though you are naturally feeling sick, you refuse to feel sick. You refuse to talk sick. And you refuse to act sick. Most of us, when we are sick, even before you feel sick, you're already feeling sick. Because, 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 because there is a way you think that, oh, I need to know that they, they, I'm sick. They can feel for me. They can take care of me. No, you're a baby, bro. You're a baby sick. You've got to grow up. Glory to God. Nobody dies with people except it's an accident. That should be a deliverance. Except it is what? An accident. Two people can't die at the same time. So why do you want pity and, and, and love in the place of sickness? Find your love somewhere else, bro. May you enjoy the love that comes with success than the one that comes with breakdown. Yeah. Choose one this morning. And that will tell you the kind of wisdom you will pick. 
Either you want the wisdom that people come to the hospital and they surround your bed. Say, sorry, I brought Rabina for you. Sorry, I brought Rabina for you. Or they surround you, opening your house and dedicating your house. And they dress very fantastically. And they pack all their cars. Say, congratulations for your new building. And they are hugging you and embracing you. Choose one this day. The one you want. Choose one. You want and like that, somebody said, Congratulations. I think that is good. It's far better that we deliver you from, from that mundane and old style of living and the weak Christianity that most of us have subscribed to. Can we go deeper? Oh, see wisdom. See faith. This includes not only about health, but all areas of your life. This is how wisdom of faith functions. Wisdom is a total agreement, is total agreement with what God has said concerning your life and the covenant he has made with you. It is foolishness to do contrary. Mm -hmm. Make up your mind to walk in wisdom regardless of the obvious intimidating challenges. Regardless, I see you coming under a mighty baptism of wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Knowledge then becomes a very strong baseline for wisdom. Knowledge becomes what? A very strong baseline for wisdom. See it again. You stumble with another knowledge that six that addresses the prosperity. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you through what? His poverty might become rich. You stumble into this. It's an information. It is not a revelatory information because the Spirit of God opened you up to this verse of the Bible. So what do you do? Understanding now says, if you are taking my place in poverty, then I am rich. <laughs> so, oh, somebody is leaving this place rich already. Amen. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, for my sake, he became what? Poor. That through his poverty, I might become what? Rich. So, understand that says, if he had become poor for me to become rich, then I am not poor, I am what? Even though you look at the back of account, there's nothing there. Who are you? Oh, I love this church. Glory to God. Oh, a, a old day after hard working day, you didn't go back home with a check, you didn't go back home with a transfer. There was no alert, there was not an apple. By the time you are sleeping, who are you? That understanding has come. And when friends tend to tell you that you are poor, you boldly tell them, I am not poor, I am what rich. So, if understanding says, I am rich, wisdom now says, Okay. If I am rich, what do I need to do? I must feel rich. I must think, talk, and act what? Rich. That is wisdom. Going forward, you not feel rich? You think rich? Eh? And you act rich. It's not the daydreaming. You are applying God's wisdom. Then I ask myself, finally, in that, in that regards, what must I do conveniently to be rich? Oh, light of the covenant then walks in. Wisdom now. Now, I am rich by this provision. By this provision, I am rich. And if I am rich by this provision, I must think rich. I must act rich. I must feel rich. Second Corinthians 8 verse 9 is my Lord. Then you ask yourself, what must I then do to work in the reality of this covenant? The light of the covenant then walks down on you. Light of the covenant then walks down on you as it relates to seed time and harvest time. So you relate yourself to working and giving. To what? Working and giving. Now, when you now begin to work and give, you are now in wisdom. But that wisdom is substantiated by the understanding you have received from the revelatory knowledge. That you are no longer poor. So of us, we are working, but we are poor working. How can you be poor working and the work will prosper us? Some of us, <laughs> we are giving, but we are poor giving. Why will you give your offering this money and you give as a poor person giving offering? 
For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, but for your sake he became poor. That through his poverty might become what? So when you are going to work tomorrow morning, Sunday, to your business, any kind of thing you are doing, you are going there as a prosperous person. You are a prosperous banker. You are a prosperous secretary. You are a prosperous fashion designer. You are a prosperous oil and gas guy. You are a prosperous estate broker. You are a prosperous uh, uh, marketer. You are a prosperous singer. You are a prosperous preacher. Praise God. And because you are a prosperous preacher, you don't wait till Sunday before your breakthrough comes. God can give you breakthrough on Monday. He can give you breakthrough on Tuesday night. Not only on Sunday morning. Glory to God. Now, when you don't kind of understand this carefully, to your wisdom application of working and giving, you start having results. You start having results. You start having results. You start having results. So I need to work to prosper and enjoy the riches. That is wisdom. So this is what God has blessed me with. I must then work so I can enjoy prosperity. How do I know? Look at Psalm 1, verse 3. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So you have been able to connect it, that provision with understanding and wisdom. You have knowledge, you have understanding, you have what? Wisdom. So you have the revelatory knowledge. And this is applicable in all areas of marriage. I mean, in marriage and all areas of life. It's God's before to get married. Praise God. When we chase a thousand, two shall put ten thousand to flight. I've said this again and again, sir. If you are married for one year, two years, and your life is still worse before you go marry, wisdom is lacking. Because marriage is a wisdom for multiplication. End of discussion. It's not about kissing and sexing, no sex. All of those things can happen if there is no change of story. You are wrongly married. You don't get wisdom. Don't trust it at me. The way you are looking at me. If you are married, forget about all the vibes in marriage and relationship. If after marriage, nothing changes, so that you make a wrong choice, or both of you are working foolishness. That God of it changes. Many are married and their kids worse than when they were single. Because we don't understand this thing. So you must carry the understanding to application of that same understanding. I begin to have results. Glory to God. Chapter 8 of Genesis 22, oh my God. The Bible says it shall be like a tree. No, sorry. Chapter 8, verse 22. Why the earth remains. See time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer. And day and night shall not cease. So I know that there must what I must do now for me to come into an harvest. What I must do now to come to harvest. And I do what I do now by revelatory knowledge. I do what I do now by understanding what I, the knowledge I've, I've, I've secured. I do what I do because I can point to the wisdom I am undertaking. Wisdom is really substance. You can't be expecting a vex without referencing wisdom. You can't say you are living your life. Say, Pastor Paul, I want to be great in life. I agree you shall be great. What is the wisdom that you are applying for greatness? I will be a multi-millionaire. What is the wisdom you have on ground to become to half millions? You can't be doing a work of two nera and want to become three nonia. You must learn to evolve. Don't get me wrong. You can start from anywhere. But I'm a wisdom in application at all times. And it's pointing you to your destination. Does that make any sense? Knowledge gives you the provision. Understanding appreciates the provision and reveals how to come into it and wisdom acts on the understanding. And when wisdom acts on, wisdom acts on the understanding, wisdom acts on the required steps to get it done. Let me repeat it. Knowledge gives you the provision, marital provision, financial provision, what is available unto you, so knowledge gives you the provision, understanding appreciates the provision, and reveals how to come into it. Understanding is understanding until how has been found. How, 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 how. 
want to be a global entity. That is the knowledge available. How do you become? How? That how means you have had clarity of how to map out things, how to get things done and get to where you are going. Wisdom now says, I have found the how, find the understanding. You are now, wisdom now acts on the required steps to get to where you are headed. If you cannot answer those questions appropriately, wisdom is not yet available. Not yet available. Somebody is making some decision here. That's why like, like you have to cry like Solomon cried. Lord, they, all I'm looking for is wisdom. It's not about fine boy, fine girl. We are the fine boy that love Jesus. Okay, you can be fine boy, not just I end in penury. If you are not working in the wisdom of Jesus. We are the fine girls that love Jesus. Omo. Life goes beyond vibes. Life goes beyond what? Vibes. Life functions on intentionality. And wisdom is intentionality. Intentionality. Wisdom is engaging. It gives you process. It maximizes the usage of your mind. So you need the prosperity of your mind to prosper in wisdom. Wisdom is substantial. You can't be in wisdom and not know it. That you, you've gotten the knowledge that you understood and you know what you are doing. It's clear. Glory to God. And at the end of the day, this thing that you call that you are doing, you can trace it. Don't forget that one. It's your take home. Job 3, 2 verse 8. There's a spirit in man. The bread or the inspiration of the almighty that gives him what? Understanding. So that, that, that's where you know that this thing is spiritual. That, you know, this thing, Naraba gave me all. Naraba the runner, Naraba gave me all. He said, oh, mama, come, mama, mama, come now, come, come, come. How you take notice thing now? <laughs> now, Baba God, though, you are not lying. Honestly, you are not lying. You are operating on Job 3, 2 verse 8. I don't they read this scripture way the way they read it now. I don't they read this particular verse. How come you now understand it like this? How come? <laughs> now, Baba, oh. You see, if when you are speaking contemporary snacks and languages, you are too spiritual. The way a man can be electrocuted, you can be spiritual. You are so synchronized in the spirit that you can tell that this understanding was downloaded. And it comes with how. Say how. And as you are applying those hours, what's your wisdom in this place? Everybody's astonished. I said, What? Ah, when did the faith journal complain? Why, why, why she don't take over everywhere? There's a spirit in man. The spirit of the Almighty. That gives him understanding. There are several of you hearing my voice today. By a state can be more. You will take over. Yeah. You enter a company. You take over that company. Yeah. They put you in a branch. They are discussing you in the headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. One lady has joined the branch in Mushi. Joined the branch in Ajao Estate. So that guy, that lady entered. The understanding she brought in that we are applying is something else. And they are discussing you at the headquarters. I don't know what I'm talking to you. Your promotion shall not be delayed. Yeah. By wisdom. Not playing around. Not playing around. One month, if nothing is changed, nothing is happening, ask yourself. Two months. Oh, what's going on? You've got to come into understanding. That devices ways. That devices what? And you begin to apply those things. So you have to cry for this wisdom. I continue from here. Cry for it. Result proof wisdom. Results proof wisdom. I do not mean the competitive wisdom. Thank God for where we began from anyway. Job was not, I mean, Solomon was not trying to ask for any competition. Lord, make me better than anybody. No. You're a musician or a singer. Do something. Lord, make me better than Nathan Abbasi. You don't need that. Settle with wisdom. Now God, they do that one. God knows how to showcase you better and better off. Don't mention anybody's name. Lord, I'm on the better I'm sure you are wasting your time. Settle for wisdom. God knows how to do the rest. You are wasting your time. But that kind of prayer will debar you from wisdom. It will make you to work on what you call earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom. It will make you to even operate occultic wisdom. You will be worried and disturbed. But when God gives his own wisdom, glory to God. Result, proof wisdom. You don't tell people you are working in wisdom. Your result will compel you to ask, what is your wisdom? Your result will compel people to ask, 
What is your wisdom? How come have you been able to handle this tough man? How come have you been able to handle this difficult lady? How come have you been able to navigate through Mushi and navigate through difficulties of African continent? How come have you been able to raise your head above all the challenges of life? Everybody in your family will know this. Nobody, nobody, nobody is doing very well. How come are you doing very well? They begin to ask. They ask Jesus, what wisdom is this? Wisdom is justified by our children. How do I know? Luke 7, 35. But wisdom is justified by all our children. Friends, you can't see wisdom and not see fruitfulness. Barrenness and dryness are far away from wisdom. Wisdom keeps asking, what must I do to be free? I move to the next level. Every time you hear this question, what must I do? Then you are hearing wisdom. What must I do to be saved? Is faith wisdom question for salvation. And because you have heard God's word today, you are seeking for understanding. Seeking for what? Why are you seeking for understanding? Because you want to learn in wisdom. Because right now, tweet it. You are seeking for understanding to learn where? In wisdom. Because once understanding comes, the psalmist says, give me understanding and I shall live. Any area you are not living, you have no understanding. Understanding in itself does not change you. It is the application of the generated house. From the understanding, it's now called wisdom that changes people. And God is responsible to give. God is responsible to give through his spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is anybody leading to ask, what must I do? Before the end of this, what must I do? When you are asking, what must I do? What must I do? Then God begins to help you to stumble into scriptural knowledge. To stumble into revelatory knowledge. He begins to help you to come to understanding. He begins to help you and empower you to take steps on the thing you have found. I don't know. I felt something in my spirit. Who is it for? The things people are struggling to get by wisdom. You will get them at ease. God's ordained wisdom brings you to the word of favor. Favor. You see why you're not very responsible? You're no longer asking, Lord, as I go to my complaint, let my, let my boss favor me. Incomplete prayer. Lord, as I enter my complaint, I receive wisdom for favor. Because once you begin to do things that compels attention, favor follows. And you are not even making noise about it. You are not talking about it. You are not making noise. Something is just available. Sir, let me tell you. This is going to be a revolution now. Let me tell you. This church you are seeing here. The reason of you have not caused revolution is because you have wisdom. When a man begins to walk in wisdom, sir, let me tell you. People you thought cannot shake body, that cannot think, not take an apple, you'll be so shocked. That's why if there's anything a leader needs in life, it's called wisdom. Wisdom can pull people out of their skin. Wisdom can make a timid to become bold. Wisdom can make people to go and look for money to give to you. Wisdom can make people to die for you to rise. So stop asking for favor. You are asking for wisdom and wisdom will generate the favor. Praise God. Wisdom keeps asking, what must I do? Acts 16, 30, 31. And he brought them out and said, Sars, what must I do to be saved? The guy brought out all the juju, everything. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. As you act on the revealed answers in faith, you get the result. This wisdom is so concise, is specific, is directive. And you know what? You begin to do things substantially. Substantially. Let me close on this. If wisdom is this thick and powerful, Pastor Paul, what is this kind of wisdom that you are talking about? Can you help us? Does it have a particular source? Obviously. Wisdom in, in itself have about four sources. But there is one I wanted to end up with today in our conversation. And that's what we're going to pray to receive. And we'll continue this teaching next service. The source of wisdom, of divine wisdom, wisdom has origin. The quality of wisdom is determined by its origin. If wisdom is this important, it sucks. And the source of wisdom determines the quality of wisdom. 
The source of, of a thing determines its capacity and greatness. After today, I don't know who is hearing me. Listen carefully. I'm not joking here. God's wisdom will land in your spirit. And the world will celebrate you. I think only faith came for me this morning. I said, the wisdom of God will land in your spirit. It will give you capacity and greatness. I'm telling you, some of you will take over the real estate world. Take over oil and gas. Take over building. Take entertainment. What is the usefulness of a king without wisdom? The, see, the, the signature of an effective kingship and kingdom is wisdom. So when you are receiving wisdom, you know what are receiving? A kingdom. A kingdom. You cannot have a kingdom and all, all you are matching is a chaos. When wisdom comes, chaos tenor expires. Who is in the building today? The current tenor of status quo in your life, hereby receive expiration date. May today, what's today's date? 21 day of July, 2024 becomes the expiration date to a status quo turn on your life. You can't be in a chaos for donkey of years. Come on, Richard, for wisdom. Give me one minute and I will shut it down. Why should you be in a chaos for too long? Chaos for too long. Wisdom, where is wisdom? What must I do, Lord? You are crying like Solomon cried. The speech plagues the Lord. So our wisdom will tell you what to ask. Lord, expand me. I want to love you and serve you and give to your kingdom. Eh? And feed my family. You, you give me, I'm not giving my children for them to suffer. I represent you. They need to know God through me. And the poor and the privileges, less privileges, also need to be resuscitated. But the force is God and his kingdom. When you speak like that, God will be pleased. And start downloading wisdom to your spirit. Start downloading wisdom to your spirit. Understand it, start coming. How? Start coming. And literally, literally, they what's happening. You are expanding, you are enlarging. And as a 360 degree turn around. You start bringing before those that matter concerning your business. And when you come before them, you put what say, you say, open your mouth and I will fill it with, with wisdom and understanding. That none of your enemies will be able to, to, to get say or resist. That something is coming up from this guy. It's wisdom. It's heavy. And they bring to the carcass of greatness, carcass of money making. Four types of wisdom. We shut it down. Four types of wisdom. The Bible speaks, and but it is the fourth one we are after. It's the fourth one we are after. Let me just tell you. Four types of wisdom. In James 3, 15 to 17, these four levels of wisdom are revealed like a lightly. James 3, verse 15 to 17. This wisdom. You see, you see, in Job, I mean, in, in First Kings that we read, you have asked for this thing. And because you have asked for this thing, it's not this again. You are living here to have only one priority. And that is what? Thank you. This wisdom does not descend from above. So there is one that comes from where? Thank you. But it's earthly, earthly, sensual and demonic. That is the four level of wisdom. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion, eh? and every evil thing are there. But wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Then what? Peaceable. Then what? Gentle. Willing to heed. Full of mercy and good fruit. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. You are not talking about the one that you are, you are just manipulating people, turning people's head, deceiving people to have an edge. No, sir. So the first wisdom mentioned here is called the earthly wisdom. This earthly wisdom is a natural wisdom. A common sense like what you are born with. You don't have to go to school to acquire it. Common wisdom. Common wisdom. When you are born, naturally you are walking, you are standing, you are doing common wisdom, earthly wisdom. The one that has an earthly trait, naturally, you don't have to do any effort. It's just there. We have what is called the sensual wisdom, sensual wisdom. This has to do with your intellect. You can refer to it as intellectual wisdom. You go to school, listen to men and advance in knowledge platforms, and it's just to acquire it. 
You are just, okay, electrical wisdom, electrical wisdom, uh, media wisdom, on a natural acquisition level. <laughs> but either earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, can be taken up higher. The third one is called the deaf foolish wisdom, which is the occultic wisdom. This is the wisdom that, occ- that occultic and diabolical people operate in. Diabolical. And people are rushing for it. People are clamoring for it. People are dying for it. People are going all the way for it. Unfortunately, from a teenage age, Yahoo Plus is diabolical wisdom. Just to make money. Caught is him of all sorts. They are all diabolical wisdom. They are devilish wisdom. They have their limitations. They have their constraints. They have their inferiority. But listen, there is a wisdom from above. This is a far above wisdom that comes from above. And John 3, that's why I say, see, that comes from above is above all. Wisdom from above. After today's service, you begin to pray for wisdom from above. Yes. And that wisdom from above, I love it so much. It is such that Solomon operated in. Operated in. And we're going to close on the note of that Solomon. And I'll continue from here next service so we can go. I'll continue from here. Wisdom from above. Wisdom from where? Wisdom from above. Wisdom from above. Wisdom from where, sir? Wisdom from where? Wisdom from where? From where? I mean, from where? After today, sir, God will answer your heart cry. You will go to school for intentional wisdom, but you will pray beyond intellectual wisdom. You will enjoy your existence on this earth, but you will operate beyond earthly wisdom. You will never have passion for diabolical wisdom. You will never have a crave for devilish wisdom. But you will pray from wisdom from above. How many King Solomon's do I have in the building? Jump up on your feet. Can we go back, son? So Solomon narratives. I love the approach. I love the attitude. I love it. I've been around for a while, I can tell you. Stay on, children of God. Let's look at it. Are you with me? I love it. I love it. Start from verse 5 so that we can, we can go. At Gibeon, listen again. Listen again. God has blew our mind through his word. He has blew our minds through his word. So let's go back. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give you. Ask. Look up here. Do you believe God? Are you really praying this season? Are you truly fasting? God is asking you, what shall I give you? Now let's see the way Solomon approached it. And Solomon said, look at acknowledgement thanksgiving. You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father. Because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. Was, was David perfect in all his ways? He killed, he, he committed adultery, fornicated. But he has a contrary heart. That even his son acknowledged. And he, his son used it to talk to God. Ah, I'm praying today. I, I didn't get there. You know, wisdom is so powerful that it got to a time in chapter 8 of Proverbs. Wisdom went to the top of the hills. And was shouting. He was calling. Who was he calling? The sons of men. He went to the pinnacle of the mountain. Lismo, Faith, Bola, Richard, Sheyi, Faith, Sheon, Paul. To the source of man was God because his, his relevance is in the midst of man. Let's go back. As Solomon said, you have shown an inappropriateness of art with you. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a soul to sit on his word as it is the who told you my sons and daughters that God does not record with a prayer of stewardship. Solomon didn't start with him strength. Lekon, Bumi. Solomon did not start with himself. He didn't start with his own strength. He started praying to God from a place of beneficiary. 
Most of us, our prayer pattern, our attitude is extremely what? Proud. Arrogant. I'm showing you wisdom here. No acknowledgement to God. No reference. And it's all about heart. Wisdom was already at work in Solomon. He never knew. Let's go. But it's about I put open your eyes there. Now, oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king. It is a God, you know, I'm capable. He saw himself as God's servant. Instead of my father David, ah, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. This one blew my mind. How can a grown up man talk like this? Can you imagine your wife wake up in the morning, sincerely not pretentious, and then before you, I say, I'm sorry, honey. You know, I may appear mature, but sometimes I can do things wrong. I don't know how to go there. Uh -huh. They can't even do it again. 21st century ladies can't do that one. No? They say, and Sarah, and Sarah called, her, called her husband Lord. Said, that was Sarah. That was Sarah. That was Sarah. But, but, but look at Solomon here saying, Lord, I am a child. I don't know how to go right or to go wrong. I mean, to go to right. I don't know how to go out or come in. Look as I said, I want you to pay to the attitude. And your servant is in the midst of your people. Whom you have chosen. He did not lay claim on the people. You see the problem now? You are ordinary leading choir member of 20. From Monday to Saturday. My choir. My boys. Only problem. You see, look at this. Look at this. You are leading just hush me. You are just leading two people in your, in your company. You say, my staff. Those my, my gay. My, you see, Solomon was a king. He did not lay claim. I'm trying to open you up to attitude. Attitude of mind that helps the environment of prayer, wisdom prayer requires to be granted. Look at it again. Let's go there. We need to go. We are late. And your servant is one of your people whom you have chosen. A great people. Too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, Give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your. Hey, this is going to be a revolution, though. To judge who? His people. Can you ever happen and say, God, this is my wife, you have given me your daughter? Africa, I can't think like that. You are my wife, my property. That's what African men say. Except the few are changing now. Say, so you're my property. I pay your dowry. Solomon was consistent in his humble approach. Give to yourself understanding how to judge your people and I may decide between good and evil. For who is able to judge again these great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord. That Solomon had acted this thing. How many of us want this kind of testimony in our life going forward? Then lift up your voice and begin to ask for wisdom. We close the service. Start asking for wisdom. Start working for wisdom. Start asking for wisdom. Start asking for wisdom. Wisdom with reference, with attitude, with humility. I want to see this changing everything about you. Changing everything about you. Changing everything about you. Changing everything about you. That it will be noticeable from today. In your home, in your house, among your friends, among your clients, among your committed believers. And God begin to bless you with wisdom. Understanding. Now begin to pray the last prayer point. Job, I mean Job, and the two verse eight, there is a spirit in man. The breath of the Almighty. That gives him what? Understanding. That inspiration of the Almighty. That gives him understanding. That from today, going forward, you begin to explore. You are exploding in the inspiration of the Almighty. Understanding is sufficient for you. You walk in wisdom. 
Your path are carved by wisdom. The multi sided wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God is now functional in your life, operative in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your left hand on your chest and stretch forth your hand to this altar. I want to pray for you under this powerful anointing. And as you go this week, you will enjoy the manifold wisdom of God. You will enjoy the multi sided, multi visited wisdom of God. You will enjoy the multi expressions of God's wisdom. You will no longer walk in foolishness. You will no longer walk in ignorance. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your path are carved by wisdom. In the name of Jesus, your path are tailored by wisdom. Your thoughts are wisdom thoughts. Your speeches are wisdom speeches. In the name of Jesus Christ, your communications shall be wisdom communications. Your decisions are wisdom decisions. You will not run at last. You will not run at last. You will not decline. You will not deteriorate. When you appear, wisdom appears. When you appear, wisdom appears. By God's wisdom in your life, you will make profit. You will progress. You will shine. You will enjoy favor. You will walk in your dominion. You will walk in your divine security. Nothing dies in your hand. Everything starts working for you. You are blessed from above. Wisdom from above is your portion. Because of this wisdom, what you have not asked from the Lord, God will do it for you. God will do it for you. God will distinguish you. He will set you aside as a person to be reckoned with. In the name of Jesus, lift your head and lift your hands above your head and thank God for the wisdom that the Lord has given to you today. Say after me, there is a spirit in me. The inspiration of the Almighty that gives me understanding. Go and walk in understanding in Jesus' name. Let's say three times that the spirit in me, the inspiration of the Almighty that gives me understanding. That the spirit in me, the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty that gives me understanding. As I go this week, I function by the reality of the spirit in me, which is the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty that gives me wisdom. And I walk in wisdom. I operate in wisdom. I love wisdom. And wisdom is at work in my life. In Jesus' name. How many of you want the part of this message? Lift up to us and let's give the Lord the glory. Give him all the glory. Honor him and celebrate him. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get seated. You've been listening to Pastor Paul Adeniyi of the Evidence Church. Follow Pastor Paul on all social media platforms at Paul Adeniyi. For more of his messages, visit our YouTube channel at CE Church TV. For praise and counseling, contact us on 081-260-90-635. The Evidence Church, adding beauty to lives, raising a people of evidence.